war rages across the mortal realms. New alliances are formed while others lie shattered, and the dominant powers ever seek their next conquest. While this and countless other battles rage on, one fact is becoming clear. The season of war has begun. This video is brought to you by the support of our channel members and the FLGS partners, Warp Fire Minis and X-Planet. Baron of Dice is the exclusive dice supplier for Season of War. Take a look through their incredible designs or even get your own custom dice made. Hello and welcome to Season of War! Tonight we are excited to bring you another game of Age of Sigmar. I'm Jordan, joined by Oliver tonight, uh, bringing out the Christmas gardens in the middle of the year almost. Yeah, it's Christmas all year round, so we're gonna have some fun. The Bone Boys are coming out to play. Yes. It's, it's good times. Uh, yeah, uh, so my army was ordered for. Oliver, you wanted a good, uh, tough test here today. Mm -hmm. uh, and we put up Bidwa and uh, OCR Bone Reapers for the vote, and our channel members chose uh, for the OCR Bone Reapers. Now we've seen these guys can uh, put out some hurt and also take a blow potentially, so it's gonna be interesting to see how this one plays out. But we can all blame the channel members for giving you a tough matchup. Thank you. Always love a challenge. But before we dive into things, I do want to say a big thank you to everyone who supports us through our channel membership on YouTube. If you're interested, you can get four extra battle reports a month by supporting us in this way. It's the best way to help out the channel, allow us to keep doing what we're doing, create more content and battle reports for you guys. So we super appreciate anyone that can help us out in that way. And then we're also always working on getting new armies painted up. I literally paint it every day trying to get new armies and units on the channel. But we do also have a campaign going on to help us get our Cities of Sigmar army kind of fully built out and fleshed out and uh, painted. So if you guys are interested in helping out in that way too, it's super appreciated. Either way though, thank you so much for watching. Let's dive into things. The mission we're playing today is Every Step is Forward. So we got four objectives on the table. It's hold one, hold two, hold more scoring. The twist with this one is if you charge, you count as an extra body on objectives. But if you retreat, you cannot contest objectives. Super interesting for both of our armies here because now I count as 21 models on the objective. Yes. <laughs> so that extra plus one could be could be the difference. But but jokes aside, it's mostly the retreating off of the uh, out of combat that's going to cost me. That's and true. at the same time, um, Jordan usually gets the benefit um, as OBR because they can retreat for their retreat uh, and charge for yeah. a command point. And now that is less. Now tying you up actually will like mitigate that quite a bit. Yeah, either so, scoring or... Yeah, where, you have to choose yeah. scoring or you're gonna take down a giant. Yeah. So you're yeah. probably gonna go for still take down the giant, but like at least I'm mitigating one of the you're two. You're choosing if I you make leave, it, some, leave me tied up in combat. Exactly, so um, some interesting ones on this mission. Yep, but Ollie, um, again, you're bringing out the signs. Why don't you take us through your list? For sure, so we're running a classic broad stomp that we've seen um, start to tick up in the, in the meta for sure. Um, we have King Broad himself with the candy cane. Um, he's accompanied by uh, four mini gargants, uh, man crushers in the battalion. Accompanying him, we have uh, the war stomper um, wearing the Christmas hat, and he has the Nellstone icon um, for the extra dispel. Um, and then the final artifact is on our gatebreaker who has um, the six up ward. So that will round out the list. Nice, low model count, uh, as am I, but uh, I do have more than you today. So as we said, I'm playing OCR Bone Reapers. I'm playing Mortis Praetorians. So I have the counter charge here. So potentially if you are coming into me, I can get extra things into combat, which you probably wouldn't like too much. And is interesting, could affect storing as well on a mission like this. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a similar list otherwise to what I played last time with OCR Bone Reapers. It's what I'm having a ton of fun with in OBR. I've got a unit of six Immortus Guard, and then two units of three Stalkers filling out my battle line. I then have a unit of four Morgas with the Halberds, who can obviously deal out a ton of damage, uh, giving me a little bit of extra speed as well. And I do have the Mortisan Os Effector uh, here pro proxied by one of the other heroes, but uh, he's gonna be able to give them plus one to Rend, and he, he's a spellcaster, he knows Empower Not to Write Weapons. And then my last unit here, because I only have six, is Catacros. Uh, that rounds out the list. Super low model count, super elite, super fun to play, but obviously a uh, smaller footprint army and there's some challenges with that. But Oliver, one thing I did have is a single battle regiment, so it does give me choice of who goes first. And while there's always a risk of a double, I'm actually gonna take first turn here 
Get out my buffs, and we'll jump into OCR Bone Reapers, turn one. So we'll start with Primal Dice, and we'll get, neither of us get any. Then my battle tactic is gonna be Magical Dominance, because I'm outside of 30, and I'll just go for Heroic Leadership for a command point. So I do get the Heroic Leadership command. Um, I will go for Heroic Leadership as well on King Broad. Fails. And then for spell casting, we're gonna keep it simple and just go for Mystic Shield. We get that off. We're gonna throw that on the Immortus Guard. And then uh, other hero face stuff, actually, sorry. We use Supreme Lord of the Bone Reaper Legions with Catacross, giving me the plus one to hit and plus one to save aura. And then he's gonna uh, have a Spy Master try and steal a command point, which I do. And then for his last fun trick, I'm just going to make uh, your general over here uh, minus one to hit. And then that's it for my hero phase. You're outside of range for my uh, bone tithe uh, nexus, so we're just gonna jump into movement. And then more to start, and I start by using at the double with Catacross's free command that he gets once per turn. After getting all buffed up, the Bone Reapers march forwards and adopt a defensive position. Don't forget you can get access to four extra battle reports every month by supporting the channel through our YouTube membership. Hit the join button below the video to learn more. Having boldly taken the first turn, the Bone Reapers are able to score hold two and more, despite only controlling two objectives. Let's see how the Gargans decide to answer. And that's it for movement, and that's gonna be it for my turn. So I'll get uh, hold one, hold two, hold more here. That's a big reason to take first on this mission to get that turn of scoring, especially against uh, an army like Guardians, where that could get tough as we go. Uh, got all my buffs up, as I said, got Magical Dominance off. Uh, without Primal Dice, it's always a little sketchy, but we did it, so that's all that matters. And my Immortus are <laughs> buffed up with Misted Shield, got the more dashing behind, so that's the the scary castle. Mm -hmm. um, it's so inviting if you want to come in and party with us. Yeah, I always do. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can take them. Six and more discard on a two up, one up, zero up yep. save. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. And then there's nothing to hit me back hiding behind them. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> they're very welcoming, but that'll be it for the turn over. Again, pretty simple. Got my buffs and the debuff out. Did steal a command point, so that's always mm -hmm. uh, potentially annoying, hopefully, for my opponent, but. That's what we love out of Catacross. Yeah, let's let's, um, let's see. I will see if there's a battle tactic that I can actually do here. We'll go into Sons of Bam at turn one and see what we can pull off. So um, the battle tactic I'm gonna go to after measuring a few things out is King's Conquest. It means I gotta put King Broad and a little on an objective that was previously controlled by my opponent. Um, that's fine enough if I can get my prayer off. So at the start of the hero phase, I'm gonna get a CP. We're gonna see if Jordan and Catacross take away my fun. Uh, we do it, yeah, and take okay, one. Okay, so I only have two, two points of fun. Um, I still get a heroic action though, and I'm gonna go for a heroic action on my um, uh, King Broad himself and try and get a CP. He gets one because he's gonna need it because he's running. And I'll just go for heroic leadership with Catacross, which I get. So in the hero phase, King Broad is going to do his prayer. He's going to pray. We're going to fail my prayer. Okay, we're going to do it the hard way. <laughs> okay, so we, now we have to roll a, um, a four, um, which is not great. Uh, but, you know, what? worst things have happened. Gatebreakers can roll fours and do 46 mortal wounds, so that's, that's a good thing. So that will be the end of the hero phase. We'll now go into movement. Uh, to start, we're gonna find out if uh, we get my battle tactic. So we're gonna run with the Man Crusher, needing a four here. Let's go, folks. That's a one. That will fail my battle tactic. <laughs> so now I'm gonna spend uh, one of the broad CPs and move him 16. Not yet looking to engage the constructs, the Gargans try to strike a balance between claiming objectives while remaining defensive. While the slow man crusher causes the Sons of Behemoth to fail their battle tactic, they are able to claim three objectives and score three points. So, uh, Sons of Behemoth turn. Um, a little bit of a wop wop, but, um, you know, I got, I got more now and, and gonna put the pressure on Jordan to come back and get some points here. Um, 
what I was w hoping to do was get the get the prayer because that would give me plus two to my movement. Um, would mean that I would only need to make a run of two um, for my uh, little man crusher in order to be on the objective mm -hmm. to 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 make it and cap it. Um, failed the prayer. Um, then needed to make a run of four then because of that rolled a one. So yeah. just uh, the things weren't going my way. Um, but that that's something that I could have mitigated in my deployment. I could have slid that one single man crusher down further towards another objective in the thought that Jordan's probably going to take that objective mm -hmm. and it would give me a counter one to go. Um, I think I deployed a little bit more conservative in the thought that I would actually be given first rather than have to take first. Um, or uh, yeah, be given first rather than Jordan taking first. And so that, that kind of threw me off um, my battle tactics. So I think it's one of the disadvantages of King Broad is turn one battle tactics. You can end up failing yeah. those depending on um, what Some what, what missions what objectives. like this can be really tough. Yeah, so you gotta really think about those missions. Um, Cool, cool learning exercise though. So, so other than that, I uh, tried to play pretty coy otherwise and um, not put too much uh, in, in a range where Jordan can threaten me big. So we'll um, go into a prior roll here yes, and see what happens. That's a five for you, a two for me. Okay. Oliver, you're getting choice. And I think at this point, um, it's still better to keep that turn prior um, like in the normal order, give me a chance of a double and everything. Um, so I'm actually going to give the turn away to you, Jordan. Sounds good. Would have done the same thing, but we can then just head into OCR Bone Reapers, turn two. All right, so getting given the turn, I don't love my battle tactic options, so I'm going to go for Intimidate the Invaders here. And then we'll roll primal dice. We get one each. And I'm uh, gonna go for heroic leadership with Katakros. I fail it, but he will use his free ones for Supreme Lord of the Lord of the Bone Reaper Legions. Let's see if I steal a command point. Not this time. Yes. All right. Okay, King Broad's gonna use his finest hour. He doesn't want to see those bone boys come in and slap him around. All right, and then uh, hero face stuff. Catacross will make King Broad minus one to hit. And then spell casting, we'll go for empower and right weapons. We'll fail that and roll a one. Um, let's take a risk, throw my primal at it for a seven. Okay, well, we will definitely try and unbind that one with our man with the magic hat, who's my general. That's five. We're Ready gonna throw a primal. A three up. Oh, we get it. And we're gonna get another unbind with that. Only one cast though, so not cool. too exciting. And then the Bone Tithe Nexus is actually going to also try and make King Broad minus one hit, which it fails. Um, so glad I did that one at least. And then the Ossifector is going to use Ossified Barbs to give the Mordas plus one rend. And then lastly, my back unit Stalkers is going to use uh, Hunt and Kill, so they'll be able to uh, run and charge. And that's it for my hero phase, we'll head into movement. And we're going to start off with the Mordast using uh, Unstoppable Advance for the plus three move. And then to guarantee getting out of the territory, the Immortus are going to have to use uh, Unstoppable Advance as well. While the Bone Reapers move forwards to engage, one Man Crusher redeploys in hopes of hiding behind King Broad. What a coward. And then my last unit of Immortus is going to use At the Double to uh, be able to move 12 inches. Those are Stalkers, Jordan, not Immortus Guard. And that's it for uh, my movement. We're into charges because I have no shooting here. Set myself up for a nine inch charge with the Mordas because I didn't want to give you a potential redeploy here. Right. Though in hindsight, maybe that would have been the play because it would have given me the objective if you had have redeployed. So, Immortus are looking for a nine though. That's a seven. We're going to reroll that. Super thirsty on commands now. That is a nine though, so they're getting it in. And because it's an eight strike plus. Strike first. Yep, they did the strike first. And that's it for my charges. Oliver, you get to start with monstrous actions. Uh, so it doesn't really matter what uh, what I do because Jordan doesn't have any command points anymore. 
Um, so I, I would roar here. Um, and we get it for extra moral victory. And then we're going to stomp here on the Morgas, try and put some damage in. We stomp him, and we put in a two wounds into the Morgast. And I'll take them both. And then into combat, obviously the Morgast are uh, fighting first, and the Stalkers, uh, I'm gonna go for the precision aspect for one of the units, and the other unit is gonna do the defensive aspect. And the Morgast will be hitting on twos and threes, and they'll be up to rend three. Uh, nine at rend three, so uh, solid 27 damage. There's eight wounds remaining. And then the three stalkers uh, that went for the precision aspect. So they'll be hitting on twos and threes. Everything's at rend two, uh, four at two damage, two at three damage. At rend two? Yeah. So four, four ups for everything. Um, so pass two of the four ones. And then these ones fail them both, so that's... So 10 so damage four, total. 10, fives, one, two, three, four, so take six. Not too bad, that five of board's pretty good. And that's my uh, first combats, Oliver, you get to hit me back. All right, come on, Brody boy, let's, uh, let's rock and roll here. King Broad and the Man Crusher only managed to deal three damage while the second unit of Stalkers deal just two more damage to the Mega Gargant. Okay, I'll go over um, with my War Stomper. Hoping to crush some more gas, the War Stomper Gargant doesn't fare much better and deals just four damage. Uh, so four damage, uh, and I make two of those wards. Uh, so we're, we're rolling hot right now. All right. Putting the Gargants on their heels in this round of fighting, the Bone Reapers achieve their battle tactic, but are only able to claim a single objective. All right, so Bone Reapers turn two. I, again, you put me in a tougher spot. I didn't want to take the turn yet. I wanted to force you either to have to come closer or um, whatever, yeah. Uh, set myself up for a potential double as well. Um, and while I got my battle tactic, I got a big charge off with the Mordast. I'm only scoring one objective here. And I did my battle tactic though, so I do get three points, but not a great turn for storing. Um, so, I mean, it happens, right? That's just the challenge of Guardians, and that's why I kind of just decided, well, I wanted to try and take this flank for sure with the Mordast, but even the Stalkers, I could have avoided combat, and, you know, if I wanted to, but I need to take your stuff down. Uh, I need to tie you up. I'm scary in combat. Not that you aren't, um, but, a 24 inch bubble as we saw is super big so you know having the the you know plus to save and the ward and the even the defensive aspect it's a big kind of deterrent and mm -hmm. um yeah the uh i mean we knew the morgas were gonna slap so i that was kind of to be expected that i was gonna take a boatload of damage on my general just a bit tough when i got i got pretty much all of my attacks through on my general and you made all of your saves. Yes, very like everything, including yes. including wards. Yeah, uh, was, but yeah, vir virtually uh, easily could have lost the more gas. Could have lost the more gas or two. Um, and yeah, and then here also with stalkers made the saves uh, with two of the damage five attacks. So yeah. they lost two stalkers, um, or at least one. Um, yeah. So so yeah, that's uh, uh, it puts me in a tough position because I can see that flank going down pretty quick. But there are, there's a few little tricks and plays that I got um, yep. up my sleeve. So it's not, um, it's not all dire situation. For sure. Um, at least the giants are still alive. So yep. that's, that's the big thing. Yep. So we'll go, we'll go into Sons of Bam at uh, turn two and we'll come in here with a cheeky little response. So. so we'll go into Sons of Bam at uh, turn two my battle tactic will be um, bait and trap. And then for my heroic action, I'm gonna do a, a CP on Broad. Um, nope, doesn't get it. For sure, I, and I'll go uh, with Catacross for heroic leadership, which I fail. Then we're gonna go into other other hero phase uh, spicy pieces. Broad's gonna do Broad's prayer. And Broad's gonna not do his prayer. He's gonna take a mortal wound. Um, yeah. 
we will then go into movement because that's it for hero phase. Finally on the offensive, the Gargans prepared to support King Broad in combat, while also holding on to the southwestern objective with a lone man crusher. So, um, shooting phase, uh, unfortunately I don't have an opportunity to throw anything because I'm, I'm standing on the objectives that I want to throw. The stuff. train. Yeah, throwing the train. So I can, I can do other throwing though. Um, this man crusher has a rock. Um, he's going to throw it at the unit that's taking some wounds. Um, hitting on four. Nope. Then we got the gatebreaker. It's going to throw at the same unit as well. And he hits. Uh, it's kind of cocked. And it wounds. Rend. Uh, rend three. Goes through. Damage four. And he'll take four. We'll charge with um, the gatebreaker, of course. Um, that'll be a nine. Charging into combat, the gatebreaker and man crusher deal a combined four mortal wounds and finish off a stalker. And we'll go into monstrous reactions. We'll go for the uh, big, big old special broad charge. Oh, buddy. On the guy who's already wounded, yes, for three. And on the uh, unit of three that's unhurt, no. And then Broad will roar and Man Crusher will stop. Four, two. All right, I save one, but he still goes down. It's one unit of stalkers down. Okay, so we're gonna start combat and I'm gonna start combat with the Gatebreaker and pile him in first. And the stalkers will use their defensive stance We'll do an all-out attack. Um, so hitting on threes, wounding on threes. Wounding on threes. That's three at rend three. All right, so I'll be saving these on fives. Not as good as last time, all three go through. Uh, 12 damage, and then death grip hits. So one more at rend three. Five up, no. For d6 damage, for two, and then stops. Two hit, uh, one at minus two. Goes through. 4d3 for three. So that's 17 uh, ward saves we gotta make. I pass two, take exactly 15. That's the unit. Having taken out both units of stalkers and secured the two northern objectives, the sons of Bayamat lay down the gauntlet, challenging the Bone Reapers to respond. So wrapping things up, was able to do what I was hoping to, which was uh, clear out this flank. That was the the, the bit of the tough piece. Um, Giants can always be a bit swingy. Jordan can make some good saves, yeah. uh, like we saw last You're time. Balanced out with what I did last turn of making yeah. everything. You made everything. Failed everything. Failed this everything this turn. So yeah, the the Giants came through big here. Um, I just had a cheeky little uh, retreat here for my battle tactic, and then was able to tag the objective with the Man Crusher. So scoring it and, and kind of putting Jordan in a little love triangle here um, where he's like, the thing that he wants to hit is not on an objective and it's kind of near death. Um, the thing that he doesn't really want to hit is holding the objective and there's another unit in the back yeah. that's just sitting annoying. Even that, if I kill this and clear it, you basically are putting me in a position where I can't leave the objective yeah. for, for a while. So hopefully, I mean, I'm like, I'm using these three units to tie down the more gas so that I can score more objective points than yeah. Jordan um, over the over the course of, of things. So that's where we are right now. So it'll be five so points. Five point, five Bring, point turn. Brings us tied. Brings us tied. Um, yeah, and going into a prior roll. Yes, sir. Round three. That's a four. To my three, so you get choice. So I, I'm gonna take the turn here um, and go into Sons of Bamat turn three. Okay, so Sons of Bamat uh, turn three and the battle tactic we'll go for is surround and destroy. Um, going into the start of hero phase, we'll go for heroic actions and I'm gonna go for a heroic recovery on um, my general. And I do get it and I will recover one wound. And then I'll just go for heroic uh, leadership with Catacross, which I fail. Let's see if I can steal a command point. I do again. I'm down to one CP. Broad is gonna do his prayer. Come on, prayer. Let's go, Broad. Oh, baby. 
Um, Broad's going to do take this opportunity to, to to heal the team, give everybody uh, some some wounds back. That'll be prayers, and we'll go into to movement, I guess. Not wanting to test their luck, the sons of Behemoth fall back, but being firmly in control of the battlefield sees them take their first scoring lead of the game. Okay, well, that's my turn. Feels a bit anticlimactic. Um, Jordan and I had a little, a, a, a really good discussion around like, okay, is this the turn I eat? Um, well, and, and maybe depending on like, depending on how you're playing this army and if you really need to score some points or something and you need to go like a little bit more Hail Mary, there's definitely a play in which you could have um, put Finest Hour on my general, thrown him in, um, gone in for um, like led into the Maelstrom or something instead of doing uh, Surround and Destroy saving that maybe for later, and then try to really like take out Hammer Jordan's the more second, second threat. Because if if that does go well and you do like kind of take out the Morgas, it, it, it's game. Oh, it's, it's maybe a riskier play, but it seals the game. It seals the game and it's done. Now Jordan still has play to come back here. Um, however, I kind of went for the safe play because um, Although I didn't get the shooting here, which would have been nice, and it, like, because then I could have maybe taken down one more more gas with like no commitment or anything. Um, I quite firmly have the objectives like this one. Jordan can't get to physically, um, and maybe if he put, committed everything all yeah. the way over here, this is going to spread him so wide. This one I got a ton of bodies on it with broad, um, and it's going to be hard for him to get to. I have my giant general in the corner here in an area where it's like yes maybe it does string jordan could be strung out and could like just tag him a little bit do a little bit of damage and come back is probably the move but it's an awkward enough position where like if i find this hour jordan doesn't kind of get some of those attacks through yep. i could hold you up for a bit yep no it's uh definitely puts me in a pickle and as we said off the top that's one of the weaknesses of this army is playing the multi-objective game uh, so yeah, I'm gonna have have to answer back. You got another big five points, which is uh, obviously that's you just care about story more than anything right now. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start fighting back and hopefully take down some more Dardans as we jump into OCR Bone Reapers turn three. All right, so battle tactics are already getting hard for me here. Um, between the mission, you've killed my stalkers, so I don't have a lot of good options. I'm just gonna go for endless expropriation so we can throw one away. And I'll just try and generate a command point with Catacross, which he does. And I'm gonna go for a finest hour on my general. And to see if we get primal dice, we get one each. Then into casting, I'll have two spells this turn. Uh, we'll start off with the empower and right weapons. Yep, and I'll just take it on a seven. Yeah, I'm gonna try and stop it. And I throw a primal on it, needing a three plus. Oh, that's really shit. All right, we're actually going to throw that on uh, the Immortus Guard. And because you filled that, you have no more unbinds. So we'll go for Mystic Shield here. A four, throw my Primal at it. Worked out perfect, we get the Mystic Shield as well. Also going on the Immortus. And then Catacross is going to make your Gatebreaker minus one to hit. And uh, what I did not steal a command point. And lastly, I uh, should have done this earlier, but we'll use Supreme Lord of the Bone Reaper Legions uh, with Catacross's free CP and we'll head into movement. And Catacross and the Mordas are both going to use Unstoppable Advance for plus three movement. Want to help the channel add new armies and units? Consider tossing over a super chat or super thanks to chip in towards our latest goal. After closing in on the Cowardly Man Crushers, the Bone Reapers charge in, looking to assert their claim on this end of the battlefield. Then at the start of combat, I'm gonna fight first with the Mordast. Oh. And I'm just gonna do a monstrous reaction. I'm gonna stomp your Morgast. Yes. For two. Take two. And I'm gonna roar. Oh, Mr. Catacross. Okay. Catacross is roared. Uh, Morgast will be twos and threes. Uh, and these are gonna be going through, so it's gonna be 15 damage into the Man Crusher. The other Man Crusher fights next, but fails to deal any damage. Though when Catacross retaliates, he deals just nine damage and fails to take down the Man Crusher. All right, so OCR Bone Reapers turn three, not what I wanted here. I counted out 
I looked ahead of the game and what scoring might look like between battle tactics and, and whatnot, and I made a typically calculated risk of trying to uh, know that I'm not going to get many battle tactics throughout the rest of the game, but that you also may be limited in that regard too. And I have the edge on grand strategy right now. So that was the play of, mm -hmm. okay, you're gonna have limited battle tactics. If you wanna come into me to get more or whatnot, you're gonna have to deny points. Trying to put, uh, put the ball in your court of having to make a play. Wasn't honestly thinking of like, character was not taking down that uh, man crusher. And you know, I guess in hindsight, I just needed one of either his shield or his sword to go through. But yeah. when I'm not, I only have one attack on the profile. So maybe I do endless duty instead of the, the other command so that I get an extra attack on everything. So while I tried to kind of be a little more defensive, obviously now, having failed to take that objective, it could really come back to bite me. But Ollie, that'll send us into priority for round four. Yeah. Ooh. That's a five. That's one, All so right. you win it. And I am gonna give it to you here. Again, try and uh, uh, put the pressure on you to make a move, see what you do, see if, what it opens up. We'll head into Sons of Bama at turn four. So Sons of Bayamat, uh, turn four, and we'll go for Intimidate the Invaders this turn. With that in mind, um, we'll go into other heroic actions. I'm gonna go for a heroic recovery on my general again. Heroic recovery, that's seven, that's exactly what I needed. And heal three, so down to 22 taken now. And Broad is gonna do a prayer. Broad gets his prayer. Yeah, I'll do plus two move, why not? Then we'll go into, we'll go into movement. Deciding that all they need to do is stand on circles, the Sons of Behemoth only move enough to complete their battle tactic. What lazy buggers. Okay, um, so Sons of Behemoth, uh, turn four, and we're able to pull off an Intimidate, not too, too shabby. Yeah, no, no, no risk to it, you knew you were getting it. Yeah, so, so was able to pull off Intimidate the Invaders. Uh, pretty easy blocking Jordan off from getting on to the one objective that he could potentially take. Um, so Still a lot to chew through as well. A lot to chew through. He's got to go through 70, yeah, about 70 wounds. With five and six up wards yeah. as well. So it's a, it's a lot of damage. And with his Morgas kind of being the main ones that couldn't do out that kind of damage on the other other flank, it's, it's kind of not leaving him with much. And so, yeah, I'm just I'm just playing uh, playing score more and or score two. Yeah, with my failed kind of gambit last turn and dropping the three points, where I was trying to put you in a bad position and force you to be aggressive, you basically can now hold station and unless I can remove you from the objectives, stop you from storing and store myself, then the game's in your hands. Yeah, it's virtually impossible, um, barring a massive amount of damage done by Jordan. Yeah, um, not impossible, which but- Which is not impossible, but like quite improbable that um, I'm, I'm gonna go behind on points. So it was, if, if I can stay back and play conservative, yeah. if I threw everything into Jordan and he like, he kills, two of the giants in my turn, then he could come back and get onto my objectives and then it's then it's a different game. Yeah. So that's that's kind of why I played so coy. Um, yeah. The giants there. Um, yeah, big risks. Like, again, you didn't give me any options. I was hoping you would give me some better battle tactic options, but you, you know what I have available to me. So at this point, I've got to make some big plays uh, to make anything happen. And we'll go into OCR Bone Reapers, turn four. I am again gonna be pooched on battle tactics here, so we'll just call a Magical Mayhem. Uh, let's try and kill something with a spell. I guess a potential Arcane Bolt could do it if I did a Miracle. And for Primal, uh, we'll get two each again, so up to four. And then Catacross will use Heroic Leadership, which he fails. I'll do Heroic Recovery here on Broad. Yes, four, three. The Bone Tithe Nexus is going to try and make your Gate Breaker minus one hit. It does. And then we'll see uh, Catacross fails to steal a command point. Then he'll use Supreme Lord of the Bone Reaper Legions for plus one hit and plus one save. And for spellcasting, I'll go for a Mystic Shield. 
on an eight, we'll throw some primal, uh, nine, and that'll go on the Immortus Guard, and then we'll try to cast an Arcane Bolt. On a seven, let's throw some primal, 12, 18, 22. It's big, big money. All right, so we got five. Oof, we're gonna need lots of sixes here. That's uh, not enough, not Nine, enough. 13, 19. 19. 25, you stop it. Do I stop it? You do. <laughs> yeah, so, almost impossible battle tactic failed. Makes it easy, I don't have to risk my general now. And we'll just head into movement. Needing to make up ground on the battlefield and scoreboard, the Stalkers use Unstoppable Advance and Catacross uses At the Double. And after movement, we'll go into the charges. We'll charge first with the Morgast on a 12. Broad is going to roar you. Big roar. Um, and we're going to stomp. Three. And I'll take all three. And then, as we said, the Mordas are fighting first. I'll only have one guy in range. Um, I had just actually used the charge to try and get more movement to help me any chance in turn five. Um, so I'll just have the one guy in combat, and I'm going to be hitting on twos and threes. Yep. Two hits. Two wounds, uh, ran two, so both go through at three yep. damage each. So, uh, no. roll off, six. You win it. And I fall on you, doing three. All right. You deal two and exactly kill a guy. Vengeance. And then the Immortus Guard are gonna fight into Broad, and they'll be on twos and threes also. That's gonna be 15 at ran two, two damage each. Uh, on five. All it defense. 10, so, so these twice. 20 damage. So 16, so t t total of 20 taken. All right, and um, because I'm roared, I can't use my fight twice. So that's the best we got. All right, Brody boy. Time for you to come in and still uh, try and lay some hurt down here. When King Broad retaliates, he deals absolutely zero damage. What a chump. King Broad doing no damage, but storm points, and that's all that he needs to do. Yeah. But that's gonna be it for my turn here. As we said, Magical Dominance was a long shot. I do get two points for holding two objectives. We were talking about it. It's nearly impossible for me to come back in this one, but we're doing everything we can. Took out the, the man pressure just so I could kind of run away from it and leave the objective. Catacros auto ran six, so he could try and get in there on the second turn. The Mortis got in, Broad's at half health, but I need to kill Broad, kill a Daybreaker, and get on the objective and outbody a Man Crusher, mm -hmm. which is uh, looking less and less possible. Uh, so that's the big challenge right now. Oliver, we're gonna keep going to the last minute. So let's go into Pryo for round five. Three, that's two. a two. Okay, I think I still take it here. Good opportunity for me to still score some, some points, get up and um, yeah. Try and secure try, the win. Try and secure the win. All right, so we'll go into Sons of Bamat, turn five. So for my battle tactic, I'm going to do the Nellstone Icon one, where I have a hero with an Nellstone Icon, and I go and take it off of. Yeah, um, you don't even have to take it; just move on to just it. Move on to it, right? Yeah. Exactly. And so uh, that'll be my battle tactic for heroic actions. I'm going to do Finest Hour on my Gatebreaker because what I'm going to try and go and do is. Um, stop Jordan's Grand Strat. He's got his spellcasting savant like over there. There's an opportunity for me to kind of well, angle my way. And the, I'm going to do finest hour too. Yeah, especially when I'm telegraphing <laughs> to you like that. You might as well. Um, so that will be that. We'll go into the rest of Hero Face. So I'll, I'll have two CP. Jordan, do you steal one with Catacross? Yes, sir, you I do. do. Okay, so I'm down to one. Broad's going to do his prayer. He gets it. We're going to have some rend. Spicy boys. That's your end on the big weapons. So that'll be the end of Hero Face. So we'll go into movement. Spending their last command point, the War Stomper uses At the Double to claim the Southwestern objective and complete their battle tactic. And after Broad retreats, I will redeploy the Immortus Guard, I think, for one inch. 
Okay. Um, shooting. I'm gonna destroy the uh, forest there. Yes, I do. Nice. For D6 shots, for four shots. And I will use all the defense here. Of course. So we'll do his 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 general one first, his, his normal stone. Uh, that hits and it wounds. Minus three rend. And he'll be on a four up save, which I fail. So it takes four damage. Wards, I take three. And the other stones um, and finest hour, so two, it does wound. I'll be on a three up. Cocked. Save it. Charges. Charging the gatebreaker. That's a three, that's a fail. But, um... And Catacross is gonna counter charge you. Um, for four, he'll barely make it. Okay. Um, uh, I'm gonna uh, roar you. Roar you. All right, I'm minus one to hit. Um, at this point, I'm probably gonna miss most of my shots, so I, I'm only gonna get maybe one or two through. I might as well go for the gamble. So let's take a dice, roll for it. Four up for uh, 46 mortal wounds. You got it. All right. One, two, three, four. That's five dice. Mortal wounds. Holy shit, Jordan. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dream. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, That's 24 damage. 24 mortal wounds. All right, well, I'll save the best for last. All right, I got 24 ward saves. I say five of them. Take uh, 19 damage, you'll kill three guys, and one has a wound left. And well, I guess the Immortus will fight you first. And they'll do uh, three attacks at Ren 2, two damage. On sixes, save one. Fives. Uh, five sour. Oh yeah, fives, either way. Six up board, nope, take four. Okay, then Cadkros is hopefully gonna do something this game, and he'll go with a bludgeon, then Start his attacking, top profile because there's a hero nearby. Seeing his first action of the battle, Catacross attacks and deals 14 damage to the Gatebreaker. Respectable, if a tad late. Okay, so Sons of Bayamat, turn five. Taking the turn allowed me to just get an easy battle tactic. Giving me more and five points on that turn puts me at 22, which is pretty good, uh, seeming as I failed that battle tactic turn one and, and will pretty much uh, seal the deal. I was hoping to, to get some extra little punch in the victory in, in a little cheeky snow, stone throw and snipe out your uh, spellcasting savant who was over towing the objective there. Yep. Wasn't able to do it. Um, did get one stone through, so that was kind of nice, but um, just missed it. Uh, and then it was some little spice and flavor for the end, which was that the gatebreaker charged into the Immortus Guard. And because they're on a two up save, with the yep. mystic shield and stuff. So a well, one-up save, one yeah. One-up save, it, it means that the only <laughs> thing that's gonna do damage to them is mortal wounds. So, you know what, let's roll for it. And boy, did we hit the lottery. I didn't need it, but I I got it. Yes. So I rolled all four sixes. Never seen that before and did 24 mortal wounds. Honestly, I don't even think I've seen anyone actually got the, get the four up off before. We always fail it. When oh we're yeah, this is the first four up uh, playing this army. I played another game. The giant was in combat for four turns in a row and I did the four up every turn and uh, failed it every turn. Yep. Uh, so, uh, yep, uh, when it pays off, it pays off big. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. Um, not quite enough to get uh, to kill your battle line here to um get for your grand strat for the, get the grand strat cool well um again as you said it'll be five points for you looking at um obr turn again at this point you're on 22 points and that's out of reach for me so the best i could do is you do open up a couple battle tactics whether it's like bait and trap or let into the maelstrom um i can actually just retreat out these two units retreat and charge charge them back in or charge the Immortus into the someone else and try yeah. not to kill this guy with Kyakros. Um, so the, I'm looking at, pro, at, at like best kind of a four point turn um, at the bottom of round five, if the you know Mordas also go in and, and clean him up, mm -hmm. they'll make an eight inch charge. Yeah, even, uh, no problem. Yeah, um, but that's again, best case scenario. Though, even if I get that, that'll put me at 15 points 
And then I had only got three for my grand strategy, bringing me to 18, and I'm still four points short. Um, again, you're not getting your grand strategy though, so it doesn't deny it. So it ends up in a relatively close game. Looking at this army, and, and obviously we want to talk on both sides, um, some interesting things happen in this game. I think for the OCR side, noteworthy, the last time I played this list, uh, it was against Slaves on you know, just a three objective mission, and uh, Josh with his Varendard tried to craft the castle that was OBR, and it didn't go well. But this is showing the downsides of an army like this with OBR, where very low model count, not a lot of you know, speed in the grand scheme of things, not super flexible. They want to stay together. Even though this is only four objectives, they're very spread out. And the terrain layout made it hard to get around. So we definitely saw the weaknesses of, mm -hmm. of scoring and uh, like we said, getting on, you know, being on different points. I think I made a big blunder with my stalkers where I, it was important to get that turn, that turn one of five points, I think. But had I, um, had I kept them safer in the later rounds and tried to consolidate these two objectives then push, that would have, I think, been, been a better play. Mm -hmm. It would have also given me another battle tactic to bring the Stalkers into the territory, which also maybe gives me a better chance of putting the pressure on you and may, forcing you to come yes. into me after that failed, one battle ta failed turn one battle tactic. Yes. So those were the learnings I had. Um, still a lot of fun to play this list, but I think it was a, a great showing as well for Kid Rod Stomp. Yeah, um, it uh, it shows you, I think, more than anything that it's not it's not a combat like crazy destruction army from pure damage output. Okay, they can put out twenty four mortal <laughs> wounds. They they can. It is mathematically it, possible. It's mathematically we can possible. Say it has happened before. But even with that happening, that wasn't what won the game. That that didn't no. had very little influence. Almost none. Anything. Um, and instead it was the, the giant who had eight wounds left, um, sitting on the objective who just didn't get k killed by the Morgas, putting him in a corner to say, Hey, you want to finish off this guy? Come get him because he yeah. an allowed me to score more and a battle tactic in the t final turn. And that's three points, which is three of the four points that yeah. I needed to, to, to get the win. So. String, strung me along with those man crushers and whatnot, like we said, forcing me to kind of stay on, near this objective. And yeah, that's like, it was all about positioning and movement and, and just scoring more, like you said, more than mm -hmm. um, d pure destruction. Mm -hmm. You obviously have the ability, we saw you went into the stalkers and were able to you know, still lay some hurt though, so you have that potential, but it's, yeah, you don't have to do it. I, I think that it was, it's interesting talking out the strengths of both these armies um, because typically I would actually say that the Giants perform very well on low objective missions. But I think four ends up being this sweet spot where it becomes it becomes better for my army compared to Jordan's where um, three objective missions are really strong for Jordan's yeah. list um, because you can really hunger down to two and deny the opponent from getting onto two because your castle is so strong and it's mm. such a threat, you need to stay back from it. Where it four and how spread out this one is, I can hold two very comfortably, kind of toe tag or touch a third and Jordan's never gonna get more on me. And so it's I think it puts, it puts you in a harder position yeah. Um, initially. Yeah, definitely. But Oliver, it's a big win here for the Guardians. Joyous moment for the uh, jolly lads. Christmas, <laughs> we love it. Yeah, and uh, that's about it though. We'll wrap things up guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed that battle report. Thank you very much everybody who subscribed. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you soon in another video.